What was the last straw for you? What was the day that you decided that you were going to chain him up and leave him in this room? Hello everybody, my name is Zach Moss. I'm getting my PhD studying Western security policy. And so today I wanted to show you guys footage of Vice News' coverage of the mentally ill in Yemen. I think it's going to draw a lot of attention not only towards the issues still going on in Yemen, but also what exactly is going on with a niche group like the mentally ill. Because you have to wonder, are they just walking around the streets? Are they coexisting with everybody else? Are they forced to flee the country? Do they flee the country? Are they going somewhere else? These are the things that I hope that this will answer, as well as me trying to add some contacts and content contacts, context, unless you need contacts, and some facts along the way. This is one of just four public psychiatric hospitals in the whole of Yemen. This is horrific. There's people in chains walking around. These guys are getting given their tranquilizers for the day to control them. It really just feels like this is a prison. What, what they're taking. It's not a hospital. Yemen has been caught in a vicious war for more than six years. Fueled by a bitter Iran-Saudi rivalry, it's the world's worst humanitarian crisis. Over 230,000 people have died. Millions are displaced. With both sides intentionally targeting hospitals and healthcare clinics, more than half the country's medical facilities have been closed. Shukran. Vice News gained exclusive access inside the facilities that few have seen, those where the mentally unwell are brought. Do you know why you were brought here? Why did they choose that camera angle? Assam fought on the front lines of the war with the internationally recognized government. He reflects on the glory and brushes over the trauma that comes with it. You were a fighter on the front lines, right? Can you tell me a little about, about your time there? Aston was brought here by the security forces who noticed him struggling to cope with what he was witnessing. He's been here for seven months, along with 143 other patients. So I'm going to pause it real quick. So what he was fighting or what country, rather, was the Saudi Arabian forces that had gone inside of Yemen and waged essentially a genocide. I'll get into a little bit of that later, but when they discuss the enemy that they're fighting, I'm just letting you know that that's who they're talking about. Dr. Adel Muli is the director of this facility. He's worked here since 2003. He says that stigma combined with the extreme stress of war is why so many family members end up bringing their loved ones here. He admits that with their frequent use of restraint and tranquilizers, his work is more about keeping people in than rehabilitating them to get out. Something I want to draw attention to as well is how skinny these individuals are. Actually, I have some statistics here. I was going to save to the end, but I just kind of want to bring it up right now because it's a little topical. But essentially, right now, there's 5 million people at, in Yemen who are on the brink of famine, which means they're about to literally die from a lack of food. And in addition to that, there's essentially about... 16.2 million people who are food insecure so they don't literally don't have enough food right now uh side note i just realized i say literally quite a bit so i apologize in advance for that but anyway as we keep watching this i think that that's something that's unique to this particular video that's worth pointing out how difficult is it for you to be doing this job and knowing that you're not able to provide everything that these patients i'm gonna pause this real quick what is the individual in the back doing I'm just curious. Claiming myself is the only thing which I can do. Mm -hmm. 
Halfway through our tour, Nurse Siham is interrupted by someone trying to get a friend with severe psychosis the help he needs. <laughs> Siham turned the psychosis patient away. Are you okay? No. دخلوا مرضى فوق على حق المستشفى بحيث انه لما يجي الغذاء ما يكفي المريض يجي على عدد المرضى الداخلين واللي يجوا بعد ما عندناش امكانين احنا نعطيهم غذاء. So you had to turn away these patients that needed help? يروح يروح عند عند اهله الى ان يتم خروج مريض وقبل بداله. It seems like a very very stressful job for you to have to deal with. I mean how how are you coping? ازعل عليهم انني اردهم، ازعل عليهم كثير. الزعل بشكل كبير انهم اردهم بس مش معقول اخليهم هنا لا اكل ولا شرب ما يستويش The world is in an economic slump and has stopped caring about Yemen making it unlikely that financial contributions will be restored anytime soon It's the country's poorest who will struggle the most There are sadly so many thousands of Yemenis who are completely unable to get any form of mental health care that they might be needing, especially in rural areas where the healthcare infrastructure is just completely broken down. We're currently just outside of the city of Taiz, heading towards a village where we've heard that there's a family there who've been really, really struggling. 35-year-old Radwan Ali Hassan's family doesn't know what condition Radwan may have. He's never been diagnosed. They once tried treating him at the Tyres Hospital, but couldn't afford the transportation costs. His mother has kept him chained in this room for the last few years. Radwan, is this your room that you live in? Oh my God. Do you ever leave this room? <laughs> What was the last straw for you? What was the day that you decided that you were going to chain him up and leave him in this room? Did he ever hurt you? Wow. Wow. Are there many other people in this village who are struggling with mental illnesses? I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but, you know, there will be people watching this who will be thinking, how could a mother chain their own son up? What would your answer be to them? Okay, so I actually have a few things that I want to kind of diverge from after breaking in a few statistics about this. So first, uh, just kind of as like a theoretical thought that I don't exactly have an answer for at the moment, but I do wonder with individuals like that, was it something that he was predisposed to having as a result of say schizophrenia or is this as a result of severe PTSD from the war? I am a little curious about that. So for example, if there was no war, what would happen to an individual like this? Now, other than that, there's 20.1 million people who are in need of humanitarian assistance in Yemen right now. Oftentimes, with these types of situations, there's a psychologist from the University of Oregon who I had met. I actually worked with him a little bit. Sorry, I know I'm dicking around with my camera stuff. I usually just keep my hands busy all the time. I need something to do. This psychologist 
he had gone into a psychological phenomenon or he gone into what I mean specifically is he had studied a psychological phenomenon known as psychic numbing. And what that is, is it's where the more people that are affected from a crisis, the less we actually care about said crisis. I think it was Stalin, whether or not he actually said this, had a good point when he said, one is a tragedy, a thousand is just a st statistical anomaly. I just butchered the shit out of it, but I think you guys get the point, what I'm trying to say here. What I think is interesting right now is what would the hypothetical best care for these people be after, say, the war ends? And I don't actually have an answer for that. But what I do know is I actually used to work with at-risk youth that were pretty similar to this, actually, believe it or not. This was for a private school um, once upon a time. But what I learned is kids who have psychosis, it's something where it could be triggered from anything, anytime, anywhere. And oftentimes things that you think would work to help, for example, being soothing to the person might enrage them, which to be honest, isn't always the best thing for people to hear anyway. But also at the same time, their logic is skewed and it's sporadic. And people who are actually dealing with real psychosis, the problem is, is if they don't get onto a specific type of medication early enough, it's actually degenerative disease that affects your brain. And so with people like this, I don't see a positive outcome for him if that's what he's dealing with. But I do think it is worth noting that most of Yemen right now is dealing with a famine or they're food insecure. And they said about 20% of the people in Yemen are having or dealing with some sort of like mental health issue. I think it's probably significantly more. I do question from an analytical perspective how they're able to garner that data. But I think the point that Vice News was proving was the lack of care regarding a mental health facility, which highlights a larger problem in that particular area. And I think that that's something that we could take with us as we move forward. And it's another perspective or an academic perspective about the realities of the situation that we can bring with us more towards the future. When people begin to wonder what had happened in this war and what happened to the marginalized people. Well, this is a group that we now know what happened to them.